So as part of the conversation of orbits, we need to talk a little bit about Kepler's laws. And Kepler was an astronomer from the 1600s, and he made some observations that led to further understanding how the solar system works and actually large planetary systems and orbits, and also contributed to Newton's ideas of uh, the force due to gravity. And so here's some vocabulary about orbits. Basically, the orbit is an elliptical path that an object follows when it's traveling around a star or a planet. And it could be a moon, it could be a satellite, it could be a rocket, any of those things traveling around. And it's elliptical. And so instead of being a, a circle with a center, it has two points of reference, and we call those points foci. And there, there's there's a relationship between the distance to a point on the ellipse and the foci that it, it always stays equal. Perigee is the point on that orbit that is closest to the object being orbited. So when the Earth is closest to the sun, it's at perigee. And when it's at apogee, it's farthest away. So Kepler came up with three laws. And the first one, nice and straightforward, planets move in an elliptical orbit with the sun at one of the foci of the ellipse. So it is at, the, at one end or the other. And depending on how big that orbit is, it may look more circular than elliptical, but just remember that a circle is a special kind of ellipse. Now his second law takes a little bit of imagination. So kind of follow along. So if you're, we're gonna talk about something that is equal area of the ellipse. And on our drawing, it's marked off with area A, which is that long, skinny, almost triangle, and marked, and then area B, which is shorter and wider. So I think those two areas of the ellipse. And also we're gonna talk a little bit about the amount of time that the orbiting object, in this case, the spaceship, takes to get from the beginning of that pie-shaped piece to the other end of the pie-shaped piece. So we got two pie-shaped pieces in a strange elliptical pie. So here you go. Every second, um, that object that's orbiting travels a distance along that arc. And if you can imagine that slice of the pie that it covers out, the area is gonna be equal as long as the time it took to travel the distance is the same. So even though the distances are different, the time is equal, the area that it traces out is equal. So area A and B are equal in size if that little spaceship took the same amount of time to get from one edge of the slice to the other edge of the slice in both situation A and B. And the real short version of this law is that a line stretching from the sun to the orbiting planet sweeps out equal areas and equal times. And you'll hear it being called equal area and equal time. So kind of think through that a little bit, and hopefully that picture helps some. And then the third law is mathematical, and, and it's a relationship between the period or the amount of time it takes for the object to orbit, one single orbit, and the average distance from the object it's orbiting. And the average distance is just simply an average between the, the greatest and least distance, and we call it you know, just rate, average radius, and then the period. So the square of the period is proportional to the cube of the average radius. Uh, and so that's, that's the third law. And from those three laws, we get kind of a mathematical picture of the planets and how they're arranged. And what was kind of cool about this is at the time that this was going, that Kepler was working on this, um, the idea of astronomy was very separate from the idea of math. And his ideas started to bring astronomy and math together. Alrighty, bye-bye.